Good evening, everybody. Good evening, students of medicine and health sciences everywhere, especially my own students. Today, our lecture is about the ocular adnexa as a part of lectures about ocular anatomy and physiology. What do we mean by ocular adnexa? Ocular adnexa involves visual accessory structures, including the eyebrow, eyelid, lacrimal apparatus, conjunctiva, and eyelashes. Let's start with the eyebrow. What is eyebrow? Eyebrow is a region that involves a thick hair on the eyebrow margin of the orbit. So the eyebrow is simply an area of thick hair growing on the brow margin above the eyes. It has different parts, the beginning and the tail, the arc and two lines, the top line and the lower line. The eyebrow has different functions, most, impo most important of which is its protective function, as it forms a physical barrier that prevents flowing of moisture, dust, sweat, and rain into the eye. In addition to its protective function, the eyebrow has psychological functions. One of them is the attraction. Many people consider the eyebrow as an attractive sign that may increase the self-esteem. For that, women, as you know, spend a lot of time and money to decorate their eyebrows. The other psychological function of the eyebrow is the expression. As many people express their emotional reaction by moving their eyebrow, either up or down. And many scholars think that the eyebrows had evolutionary function as it contributes to protection of early hominides from predators. Another structure of the ocular adnexa is the eyelid. Eyelid is a skin that covers the eye, protecting it and distributing the tears to prevent eye from dryness, especially during sleep. In addition to distribution tears to nourish and moisture the corneal epithelium. Why? Because the cornea is, as we mentioned in a previous lecture, is an avascular tissue. The anterior part of the cornea is nourished by the tear. The eyelid contributes to distribution of the tears. Now, as functional anatomy of the eyelid, the eyelid is composed of six layers. From anterior to posterior, they are the skin, and subcutaneous tissue, the muscle layer, the tarsal plate, and the septal fiber, and the uh, palpebral conjunctiva, the part of conjunctiva that is uh, lining the eyelid. Now, let's discuss those layers in details. First of all, let's talk about the skin of the eyelid. The skin of the eyelid is one of the thinnest skin in the body. It involves sweaty glands and sebaceous glands and has more pigment cells. In the ridge of the eyelash, there are hair follicles. Sorry, in the ridge of the eyelid, there are hair follicles that will become the eyelashes. The eyelashes, hair follicles, are connected, as you see, to the sebaceous glands in the eyelid, the gland of this and the gland of mold. Sometimes the color of the eyelashes are different from the color of the hair. If the eyelashes are pulled out, they usually need seven to eight weeks to grow back. 
the subcutaneous tissue of the eyelid is found uh, beneath the dermis. It is a loose connective tissue that has blood vessels, nerve endings, and fat lobules. The third layer of the eyelid is the muscular layer. It is actually composed of two muscles, the orbicularis oculi muscle, the portion of the orbicularis oculi muscle that is found in the eyelid is called the palpebral portion of the muscle. It is originate from the medial uh, palpebral ligament and is inserted in the outer corner of the eyelid. This muscle acts involuntarily to close the eye during sleeping or during blinking. The other muscle is the levator palpebrae. It originates as or it starts as an aponeurosis in the eye socket and then is poured in to the uh, ridge or to the uh, corner of the iris. This here. The fourth layer of the eyelid is the fibrous layer, which involves the orbital uh, fibrous septum and the tarsus. The tarsus is composed of dense connective tissue that gives the eyelid its shape. It also involves mod uh, modified sebaceous glands that are called mybobian glands. Uh, th uh, these glands secrete what is known as mybum, which, uh, which forms the lipid tear, the lipid uh, layer of the tear film. And lastly, the palpebral conjunctiva, which is the part of the ocular conjunctiva. The palpebral conjunctiva is composed of non-keratinized stratified columnar epithelium that has goblet cells. Goblet cells actually secrete, secrete mucus, which form the mucus layer of the tear film. The conjunctiva also contribute to the immune surveillance and uh, impair invading of microbes into the eye. The last the last structure of the ocular adnexa is the lacrimal apparatus. The lacrimal apparatus includes anatomically connected structures that produce the aqueous tear. Aqueous tear is one layer of the tear film as we will discuss. It is composed of the lacrimal gland which produce its transparent transfidate fluid in the space between the eyelid and the eyeball and then is collecting by the lacrimal canaliculi that after washing out the eye they will drain into the uh, punctum lacrimalis or puncta lacrimalis that will convey the tears into the lacrimal sacs. The lacrimal sacs well, uh, is a dilated part of the nasolacrimal canal that will drain in the nasal cavity, especially in the posterior nasal meatus. The tear film is actually composed of three layers. The aqueous layer that is produced by the lacrimal apparatus, the lipid layer that is produced by the mypopian glands of the eyelid and the uh, muc a mucus layer that is produced by the goblet cells in the palpebral conjunctiva. The aqueous humor wash the eye and uh, nourish, nourishes the cornea, the trabecular meshwork and the uh, other avascular structure in the anterior cavity of the eye. The lipid layer prevents evaporation of tears. 
while the mucus contributes to the distribution of tears in the eye. Actually, there are three types of tears. The basal tears that continuously uh, produced, released, and drained in the eye. The reflective tears that uh, are produced as a reflective mechanism when a foreign body or, that, or dust uh, invade, uh, in, uh, is invaded into the eye. And the third type is the uh, emotional tears which are uh, exclusive for the human being. This is about the major points related to ocular adnexa of the eye. In the next lecture, we will talk more about the physiology of the tears. Thank you for being good listener.